Good morning, hello all my dear students. I am Dr. Aya Fauzi, teaching assistant in the Department of Musculoskeletal Disorders and its Surgery. Today I will be with you in the first section of physical examination course. We will talk about shoulder joint and elbow joint. First of all, I would like to welcome you to the orthopedic department and I would like to inform you about our sequence in that course. In that course, we will uh, learn how to, physical how to do physical examination for all body joints. We will start with shoulder joint. In each section, we will talk about examination, which is consist of inspection for while the patient is walking into the examination room, then while he is disrobing his clothes, then after he is disrobing and we actually see the flesh and the body without clothes. Then we will talk about palpation for the bone and soft tissue. Then we will examine, examine, do examination for range of motion and some special tests to test the joints. Okay, first of all, our joint today is shoulder joint. Actually, we have something called shoulder girdle. Shoulder girdle is a girdle consists of three art, four articulation, three joints and one articulation. First joint is a chromioclavicular joint, then glenohumeral joint, then scapulothoracic articulation and the sternoclavicular joint. We can see that here in our skeleton. First of all, that's the glenohumeral joint between the humerus and glenoid cavity. Then we have a chromioclavicular joint between a chromion, with, which is a part of a scapula, and the distal end of clavicle. Then we have here clavicle and stern, which is a uh, sternoclavicular joint. Here in the back, we can see scapulothoracic articulation, which is between the scapula and the thoracic or the rib cage. Okay, we will talk now about what we will inspect or what we will see while the patient is in the examination room. First of all, our patient is walking into examination room. We must watch while he is walking. The symmetry of movement of both upper limbs with both lower limbs. We have to see the symmetry between alternative movement between upper limb and lower limb. Opposite limb move with each other. Then we will Notice the swing motion, which must be smooth and natural and bilateral in both upper limb. While the patient disrobe and take off his clothes, we want to see is the movement symmetrical between both upper limb or he is using one upper limb only. After the patient disrobe and remove his, upper, his clothes, we will watch for any scars or abrasions or any plips or dislocations or any discoloration in the skin. Then we have to compare between both sides. It's a very important part in our course. We always compare between both sides. That's very important to know if the limb we are looking or examining is normal or not because the other limb is always the reference. Then we will look for any asymmetry in the contour or the, our color or size of the limb. We will look to the clavicle here. We will look to the shoulder. And in the back, we will look for the scapula. It has to be both the scapula in the same level. And both have to be in the same side. We will look also in the spinous process in the back and be sure that it's already in equivalent level. We will look also in our rib cage for any abnormality or asymmetry. Okay, now we will have a volunteer to see all these things on actual volunteer. Now we will have one. As we can see, while the patient is walking, we must watch his movement of upper limb with lower limb, alternate movement, swing of both upper limb with lower limb. It must be smooth and asymmetric between both sides and very smooth and natural. It, 
<coughs> we watch the patient while he is walking from the door, while he is disrobed, and we contain inspection of his movement. As we said before, in each section in that course, we will look for two things. First part of examination is inspection. We did that be, uh, in a few th minutes before. Then now we will do examination or palpation. For palpation, we will look for bone, then soft tissue. Let's begin with bone. First of all, we will inspect and palpate each bone in shoulder girdle. Uh, we will uh, use the skeleton and the volunteer. First, we will look for coracoid process. Coracoid process is a deep bone at the end of uh, clavicle. The distal third, which is deep, we will look for, we will push a little deep, and we will find it just below the, the clavicle. Here we can see in the skeleton, the lateral third of the clavicle, we push one inch below, we will find coracoid process. Then we will go up again to the clavicle, we will go lateral, we will find a chromio-clavicular joint, and more posterior we will find the acromion process, which is a part of a scapula. Here again, we have the clavicle, medial third, and lateral. Third, we will go down one inch and we will find coracoid process. We will go up again for the clavicle and we will move laterally. We will find at the very top of the shoulder the acromioclavicular joint. If we moved more posteriorly, we will find acromion. Okay? Now we will go back for the acromioclavicular joint and we will move downward we will find a tuberosity, which is the greater tuberosity of humerus. Again, we have the clavicle, medial third, and lateral third. Below the lateral third, we found the coracoid process. We will go up again for the clavicle, move laterally. We found the acromioclavicular joint. We will move backward. We will find the acromion. If we Go downward one inch below acromion, we will find a very big tuberosity, which is the greater tuberosity. It's a part of humerus bone. Okay. After we found the greater tuberosity, we will move a little medially, ask the patient to flex the elbow, and move in external rotation. We will feel a movement. That's the tendon of biceps muscle moving in the bicepital groove. Here we can see we have the greater tuberosity. We move a little inward, medially, we find a groove here. That groove is a very important groove, which is called bicepital groove. A very important tendon path here, which is the biceps, biceps tendon. We can feel it, as I said before. We ask the patient to flex the elbow and move in external rotation. Here, the movement of a tendon of biceps who make us feel something moving here. Okay. Again, we have the greater tuberosity. We move the medially. We ask the patient to flex the elbow and do external rotation. We feel the movement of biceps tendon in the bicepital groove. Okay. We saw the crocoid process, acromioclavicular, <coughs> acromion, greater tuberosity, and bicepital groove, which have the biceps tendon. Now we will look from the posterior view. We will see the scapula here. Okay, from the posterior view, we have a very important bone, which is the scapula. We can palpate few things from our scapula. First of all, the spine of the scapula. It's here. We can feel it easily. We can find it easily by finding a chromioclavicular joint and move with the acromion. 
While we are moving in the acromion, we will continue to move in the spine of the scapula. It's easily found, actually. Then we have to find the inferior angle of the scapula, which is easily located here. It's a very prominent bore. From the inferior angle of the scapula, we have two borders. Two borders of the scapula. One medially, which is called spinal border, and one laterally, which is called lateral border. Here it's easily located. We can ask the patient to put his arm in internal rotation, and that will make the scapula poop out easily. Inferior angle, spine of the scapula, okay, medial border, and lateral border. It's easily detected, okay. So. After we found all that bone, we will move to the soft tissue, okay. We move, we, in soft tissue, it's usually divided in zones. We talk about one zone in time. First zone is rotator cuff zone. Rotator cuff zone is the zone of a muscles called rotator cuff. Rotator cuff is a very important muscle for shoulder. They call the shoulder gyro because they keep the balance of shoulder joint and very important in, in movement too. Okay, they are four muscles, three superficial and one deep. The one deep muscle is subscapularis and the three superficial muscle is teres minor, infraspinatus and supraspinatus. Okay, after finishing the first part of the section about bone palpation, now we will move to soft tissue. Okay, soft tissue is usually divided into zones. First zone here, we will talk about a very important muscle, which is called rotator cuff muscles. Rotator cuff muscles is a very important muscle for the stability and the good movement of shoulder joint. They are four muscles, three superficial, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and teres minor, uh, and one is deep, which is subscapularis. They, they are a very important group of muscle that actually involve in internal and external rotation and a lot of movement of shoulder joint. How we can palpate the rotator cuff group? We will ask the patient to sit relaxed. Then we will ask the, we will take the shoulder in passive extension. Passive extension, okay? Then we will go just under the acromion. Now we are, our hands is on the insertion of rotator cuff, which is in greater tuberosity. Okay, here we can feel the movement, we can feel the insertion or the tendon of rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is inserted here in one tendon. They are collected and inserted by one tendon here. We can feel it while we do passive extension and we can feel them just under the acromion. Okay, that's our first zone and it's a very important zone. In examination of shoulder joint patient, we have to re-examination of rotator cuff group. Do special tests and do palpation for them. They are a very important group of muscles for shoulder joint. Okay, our second zone will be subacromial and subdeltoid bursa. What's bursa? Bursa actually is like a bag that's filled with something looks like a gel to protect and make movement easily. Okay, it's usually found between bone and muscles or bone and tendons and ligaments to ease the movement and the help to decrease the fraction. Here in shoulder, we have two important bursa under the acromion, which is called subacromial bursa, and under the deltoid muscle, which is called subdeltoid bursa. Okay, both are very important bursa. Any inflammation in bursa make it painful and dread and give a boogie sensation. Here in shoulder, we don't feel bursa unless it's inflamed. If it's inflamed, we will feel a little hotness and it will maybe look red and will have just like a boogie sensation and some edema in the area. While bursa is normal, we don't feel it and we don't see it too. Okay, our third zone will be the axilla, which is a triangular structure, okay? It's found deep under the arm, here. We ask the patient to relax and we do abduction in the upper limb. Here we can put our hands in the axilla. Okay, axilla is a triangular structure that's contained four sides and one base. Okay, in axilla we can see the anterior border, the posterior 
and medial and lateral and apex. Okay, it's look like a triangle. Here we can see the triangle. Anterior border of the triangle, okay, is the pectoralis major, the flesh of pectoralis major. Here we can see. We, we know pectoralis major insertion in the bicepital groove and it move anterior to the chest wall. Here is a flesh of pectoralis major, major which, con, which consists of anterior aspect of triangle of axel. Okay. Medially, we can feel the ribs from the second to sixth ribs covered by serratus anterior. Laterally, we can see the bicepital groove okay, with muscles inserted in it. Posteriorly, here, we can see the flesh of muscle, okay? This muscle is latissimus dorsi, okay? Now, again, the axilla, we make patient relax and make abduction, okay? We can see anteriorly the flesh of pectoralis major, posteriorly the flesh of latissimus dorsi, laterally the bicepital groove and its contains and medially from the second to third to thick thrips, okay, covered by serratus anterior. Why it's important to palpate axilla? Because it contains a very important group of lymph nodes. When we are doing the examination, if we found any pain or for the patient or any swelling, we suspect a lymph node inflammation. Again, axilla contain a very important structure. We have to be very careful while palpating it because it contains nerves and vessels and veins. Okay, then we will move to a very important zone, which is the muscle zone. In that zone, we will see muscles of a shoulder joint. First of all, we have a very important muscle in the region of the neck. We can see it easily while the patient rotates his head to the opposite muscle. That prominent muscle is called the sternocleidomastoid. It's a very important muscle that connects neck to the shoulder region. That said, sternocleidomastoid, we can see it. It moves from the maniprum and, and the sternum to the mastoid process. We just ask the patient to rotate to the opposite side and the muscle pop out. Okay. Second muscle we will look at <coughs> is pectoralis major muscle, the main and the most important muscle in the chest region. It's a prominent and obvious, that's it, pectoralis major. It covers the upper part of chest and move to be inserted in the bicepital groove. We can see it here and easily palpated, that's it, pectoralis major. We can also palpate pectoralis major in the anterior border of axilla, as we said a few seconds before. Okay. We also can see two very important muscles, which is biceps and the triceps. How we can differentiate? We can ask the patient to make a fist. And ask the patient to do a flexion of elbow joint. We found the biceps very prominent here in the anterior, anterior aspect of our arm. Okay? For the opposite, ask the patient to do extension of the elbow. So, we will find triceps very prominent in the posterior aspect of the arm. So, we have biceps in the anterior aspect of the arm and triceps in the posterior aspect of the arm. We have pectoralis major at the upper end of the chest and the sternocleidomastoid between neck and between shoulder. Okay, we can see them more prominent here in our skeleton. Okay, that's anteriorly. We can see here the biceps while hand is supinated and the triceps posteriorly. Pectoralis major is missed here. Okay biceps and the triceps. Okay. Then we will move to a very important muscle that form actually the shoulder contour, which is the deltoid muscle. Deltoid muscle is a very important muscle for a shoulder. It forms the usual shape of shoulder contour. We have two deltoid and we have to observe both for symmetry between both sides. Symmetry in size and we have to palpate incursion to detect any abnormality in the muscle. 
Then we will move to a very important other muscle, which is the trapezius. Another important muscle we have to know is the trapezius muscle. Trapezius muscle is another muscle that connects the neck to shoulder and thoracic area. Okay, trapezius is consists of three parts: upper fiber of trapezius, which is from the neck to shoulder, then middle fiber of trapezius, then the lower fiber of trapezius. It's a very large muscle. It actually begins from the occiput, move to shoulder, and move back to the thoracic. Okay, that muscle is a very important muscle. We have to palpate in the cervical region to detect any spasm on it, and in the thoracic region too, and in the medial border of the scapula. Another two muscles in the medial border of the scapula are rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor. We, you, we detected the scapula before. By doing internal rotation of the shoulder, we found the scapula. We found also the medial border of the scapula. We have two muscles attached to the medial border of the scapula. In the upper area, pectoralis major, and in the lower, pectoralis minor. We can easily detect the pectoralis major and minor by giving resistance to internal rotation. Easily detected both muscles. Okay. Now we can see those muscles on our skeleton. Here we can see the deltoid muscle, which is forming the shoulder contour. Then we can see muscles that found in scapula. rhomboidus major and minor. Last zone is a very important zone with a lot of muscles, sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis major, biceps, deltoid, trapezius, and rhomboidus major and minor. It's a very important muscles, and that was the section for today, and we will see you again soon.